Hey friends, guess where we are? We're at Harvey's, scouring the yard for uh, more hickory. I've run into a little Osage orange this morning. It's a beautiful morning. It's really nice and mild. Uh, he's done a lot of uh, work here since the last time we were here. He's moving stuff around. And uh, so actually stuff is a really big mess. So I don't know how much luck I'm gonna have finding um, hickory, because this is what I'm looking at. However, I have this nifty little app that allows me to take a picture of the bark and uh, it tells me what the tree is. And I know being a wood guy, I should be able to look at the bark but a lot of this bark is so bunged up, I can't even, I, I can't make head nor tails out of it. If I see it in the woods, I can more than likely identify it. But uh, yeah, it, this is, uh, let's see if we can make it. Yeah, I think we can make it over there, but I mean, this is what we're dealing with. So I'm just uh, climbing a bunch of stems and uh, searching with my little app. But he's got a, he's, he hired a guy that's really helping him get organized because honestly, let's be serious. The one man trying to deal with all this, he was, it, things were pretty much a mess here. They still are, but they're, uh, they're starting to group things when they come off the saw and band them together for like sequential cuts for like book matching a table or something like that. So it's, it's pretty exciting. Things are, uh, you're coming along so um i'll uh get something to look at and pop back in well pile number three <clears throat> seeing a lot of ash and a lot of walnut but i don't see any hickory over here I can't imagine having a hickory tree in the middle of all this crap and trying to get to it. It's like, we'll get to it next next winter. Not this winter, but the next winter. This looks like that's white oak right there. No, it's red oak. Sorry. There's a little bit of everything back here. But this is nice to see his his new guy is is helping him at least get you know some of this uh yeah like see these are all sequential cuts here this is a uh, cherry it looks like beautiful stuff um anyway I'm glad it's not 105 degrees today. Uh, but, uh, well, the search continues. See you in a bit. I just wanted to pop in for a brief moment. Uh, I gotta roll the windows up here. Um, I've uh, discovered, uh, and I mean, if you're, if you're gonna get into building axes uh, yourself, and you're going to your hardwood supplier to pick up a board, um, you definitely want to be concerned about moisture content, um, but that's not everything. It also depends on how the board is dry. Uh, the thing that I've run into with my hardwood supplier that I, uh, I get wood from on a consistent basis for my uh, cabinets and uh, my other woodworking projects, uh, more conventional type of woodworking, uh, you know, square, straight, and level stuff. Uh, it's uh, it's dried for production, which I guess, for lack of a better term, you would call it flash dried, and it's a higher heat and what it does is cook the wood too much. And so basically it cooks the elasticity for handle making out of it. 
Well, we're back here at the bunker. And oddly enough, now that I, I've talked about this, I thought I would pop in yet one more time. I'm just interjecting here um, about what the flash drying looks like when you break a handle. Uh, where's that one? Where is it? Doggone it. Here it is. So I'll get a good, see if I can get a closer close up of this. Now, generally, these breaks happen at the head. Um, and believe me, this is not, this was fit right, and I was careful with my wedging. It's not over tight on the wedge. Let me get a, an instrument here so I can point. But if you notice, let me see. This uh, in here, it looks sort of sawdusty. It has this sawdust look to it. Here's the handle. Let's see if we can get a better picture of the handle. Yeah. See how the wood cells are just kind of hollow? And, and like, it's almost like dry rot. So if you break one, and you see this, your wood's overcooked. All right. Um, and I've experienced this firsthand with, with actual breakages. Um, and um, not just the wood not being able to handle the shock wave coming up the handle. So uh, it's just something you need to take into account. Uh, a hardwood supplier is probably unlikely uh, to tell you what their process is. Uh, I know a lot of Sawyers and stuff that, I mean, it's all kind of a big network that I've been in since the early 90s. And uh, so I've been able to narrow this down and just seen it firsthand hafting some of these and just watching the performance of the handle. Um, so it's something to be leery about if you, uh, you know, if, you, if your supplier is a new supply, I wouldn't buy a whole lot of wood. I would buy something for a couple of handles and test them out and see how it goes. If you've got breakage, I probably wouldn't go back and buy more wood, uh, especially if you're just doing a conventional design. Some of the stuff uh, that I had, um, I was doing the super curvy handles and so there was there were more factors um, to my breakages but i started uh, systematically eliminating uh, factors that were causing breakages and it just came down to the wood so i'm pursuing uh, that's why i'm drying it myself um, basically hand selecting it myself um, and i'm i've gone to uh, sawyers like harvey and uh, the guy up in, in Winfield, uh, west of town. Hey friends, well, we're back at the shop. Uh, was hoping to get more wood, was hoping to actually find some hickory, but it was just such a mess there. And I really didn't um, find hickory and I kind of about uh, three quarters of the way through my little hunting trip, uh, I realized that even if I found something in the middle of a pile, there was no way we could get it out. So I think what is going to come to is just every couple of weeks, just uh, as they uncover stuff, just showing up and seeing what's there. There was a lot of ash. I ran into some elm, some walnut, uh, what else? A big juniper, some sort of juniper tree, pine. Um, just all kinds of stuff, but just nothing I really uh, could use. I did run into some interesting pieces of Osage Orange, which are right here. This one, which this bit right here isn't really going to amount to anything axe handle wise, but this is uh, something will come of that. And um, this is the outside of the tree, obviously, here. So we're going to try 
meaning sapwood. We're gonna try to get something out of this. But this was like, it, it made me, uh, it made me happy to see this because this is gonna put a curvy handle in play if there's enough material. This was obviously a branch of, of some sort. Um, but what I'm looking at for the handle is this here in through here. It's really the only place where I have thickness. So I'm gonna have to be really careful um, about what I use because if I get out here or out here, obviously I couldn't make an ax handle. You know, I couldn't go ax handle, ax handle, ax handle. I would end up with no material. So it's probably gonna be ax handle. kind of investigating here. We're not really, at this point, doing anything in particular. This draw knife in particular is not very sharp at all um, because of the bark and whatnot. The bark. going to totally dictate what's going down here. This won't be something that's made <clears throat> in the space of an hour or two or a, even a day, but uh, I think it's going to work out well. This end grain is really super nice. It's almost straight up and down. So this would be the way I don't think, I think the bow maker would want a grain better than this. I'm not sure. I am not a bow maker, but from what I've been able to observe, now, the bow maker is going to remove a layer at a time and check the tension on his bow and whatnot. So we're gonna we're gonna take we're gonna try to take a a, a page out of that book and uh, all in you know all keeping in mind that uh, oh, let me zoom back out there we are um, all keeping in mind that we have to <laughs> get it halved. Um, we have to uh, save the middle portion of this. Uh, and I, our, our uh, eye is probably gonna be up in here somewhere, but it's a great way to basically uh, take apart a tree. Um, the more you learn about trees, uh, the better your handle work is gonna be.
Well, friends, there's where we're at. After, oh, geez, after, look at that. But uh, I thought I was going to be able to get a much curvier uh, handle out of it. But uh, after uncovering the wood and taking it down layers with the, the draw knife, I realized uh, there's some checking in here. Um, there's a check. Oh, I took that check out. But there's some big checking on the, uh, the end here, which I was hoping to use this as the butt end. Um, but this is a really enormous check. And there's one, there's one up here too. Um, so I just conceded uh, that I wasn't going to get what I wanted. But however, and I may, I may alter this pattern a little bit. I may bring this down a little bit, but I wanted to stay out of these little fissures right here. They're not bad and I'm eliminating most of them. Um, they're, these will come off and probably this will get shaped up into this area. Um, but the grain is definitely following the handle, which is what you want. Um, so I feel pretty good about it. This is just my standard curvy pattern. It's a, it's a 30 inch and uh, it's coming out of essentially the middle, not really the middle, but it's uh, far enough away from the ends that I'm, I feel like I'm getting a really solid piece of wood. So I, but um, I was worried too about the thickness. So um, this is still the bark side. This rounding isn't me shaping. This is the actual uh, round of the branch. Um, it just cleaned up because I didn't know, you know, I was trying not to commit to anything. I was just trying to get it whittled down to where something would become apparent and, and then we could go from there. Um, on a, in a situation like this, I don't like to just start whacking away wood willy-nilly. I kind of do it um, a little bit at a time and stop and think about it uh, and just kind of see what the wood says, not, not necessarily force it into a machine and Put it through the process that you know normal handles go through this is kind of a this is kind of a special deal um it's a unique branch and we're going to try to utilize the curve in it so i think we've done that pretty well so anyway i'll talk to you in a bit bye oh well what do we have here Oh, what is this? Darn. I'm pretty happy with the green. Just a touch of run out, but not nothing to be upset about. And this is just a dense wood, so I'm less worried about um, run out. I did take it over to the bandsaw. Um, there was quite a bit that came off, but uh, I think I, I think I was right in, in, in to start with the draw knife first, because, like I said, this is actually the bark side. This this contour right here is the bark side, and we're going to need every bit of that for the palm swell. I'm not gonna have my usual two inch palm swell, so I'm gonna have to do my palm swell a little bit differently, but this side right here, this side right here, I'm gonna need that round right there. And instead of measuring for center, I will probably adjust, but I'm gonna count grow rings and use a piece of string to string this so I'll count my grow rings and mark center and then since this is a flat edge this is flat um, where they went through the mill 
So once I get my center here, then I'll measure over and mark a center here. And then I'll come down to the butt end and I'll count grow rings again. And with taking this round into consideration, because I have to duplicate this over here and try to max this width out because I, I want to try and get as big of a palm swell as possible. But then I'll hit center with this and then I will take string and connect those points and then very carefully scribe marks in relation to the string onto the handle all the way around and then measure off my center line to get my rough thickness in order to do the shaping. But I want the center line, I would really love it if the center line broke in between uh, the two parts of the hard grain but we'll see how that goes. All in all, not too stinking bad. Pretty good looking grain there. So anyway. That is the journey of being down at Harvey's this morning, picking out a piece of wood, getting to the shop and getting after it. And, um, you know, hopefully we'll make hopefully we'll make something really cool out of this. I'm really hopeful. Um, I you you never know. You could have the best intentions with the piece of wood, but with oddball pieces of wood like this, the wood's going to dictate what you can do and what you can't do with it. The cool thing is the piece that I cut off over here. Oh, this is going to be a deadly hatchet handle. It's going to be it's going to be like a a nouveau hatchet handle. So try to use up your scraps. Don't, uh, you know, try to be efficient. Um, but anyway, hope everybody's doing good. I know I've said this before. I'm not sure how this is all going to edit out, but have a great weekend. Uh, love you all. Be kind. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. See ya.